2011 was another watershed in the history of the Kenya Red Cross Society. In this year, the society witnessed remarkable improvement in the quality and implementation programs and activities countrywide. High levels of preparedness were exhibited by the society through timely and effective responses to the myriad of disasters that adversely affected the country in this year. In 2011, the KRCS's work impacted on the lives of more than 6 million people, an increase of 1 million from 2010, when the society responded to the needs of at least 5 million beneficiaries countrywide. In July 2011, with 3.75 million Kenyans classified as food insecure and on the verge of death by starvation, with malnutrition levels shooting up to 38% and above in parts of Turkana, the society showed exemplary emergency humanitarian response to victims of the worst drought to have affected the country in the last 60 years. Yes, here she is, helpless, doing everything that she can do. And she needs our help. She needs our help to save her child and so many other parents do out there. So I would like to appeal to everybody, please let's not get tired of sending our donations because these lives can be saved. They can be saved. It is not necessary for another child to die. It is not necessary for another parent to lose a child or to die. Earlier pictures that we saw from Tukana just showed people that were stripped of all dignity. You know, I mean, they really, <clears throat> they, they were people who were, I mean, looking for food. It's got to be, I mean, you know, can you imagine not having food on your table? I can't forget the, to see the images from Turkana. I think early intervention would have averted this, you know. Um, so I think the fact that it became a crisis, it didn't really have to become a crisis. I think we could have acted much earlier as a country, and that's not, it's not a blame game. But it's just saying, as a country, we could have, we saw the writing on the wall. I mean, the Met people, you know. Led by Secretary General Abbas Goulet, KRCS raised an emergency appeal with the aim of offering humanitarian assistance to the affected families, especially in the arid and semi-arid lands. But with the appeal not getting the expected and immediate funding, a new and innovative way of saving lives the first of its kind to be used by any national society was embraced. Kenya Red Cross had launched an appeal through International Federation, but that is through the international mechanism. This particular one was homegrown, homemade, and it was uh, the most successful uh, thing. If nothing else, it's about giving people their dignity. When the, the severity of the drought hit us, it was clear that the little we were doing wasn't going to be enough. And, um, and so we thought, you know, what else can we do and how can we use um, the, the, the corporate sector to get involved in this, uh, in this thing. We knew that we couldn't do it on our own. We knew that we would have to uh, engage the public. And we knew that the best way of doing that was to do that in partnership with other people. So we contacted um, our friends at uh, Kenya Commercial Bank. Uh, they said yes. We then contacted our friends at the um, Media Owners Association. They said yes. And then the thing uh, took off. The Kenyans who, you know, given that 10 bob through M-Pesa on, you know, twice a week. Um, if we get half a million people, you know, give 10 bob a week, it's really coming to the people here. It's saving the lives of, of these kids. Through an initiative dubbed Kenyans for Kenya, KRCS, in collaboration with the Safaricom Foundation, the Media Owners Association, and the Kenya Commercial Bank Foundation, lobbied Kenyans and corporates to contribute towards reversing the fate of the drought-affected families using electronic platforms. It was an initiative totally initiated by Kenyans, initiated by Kenyan corporate, Kenyan media, Kenyan humanitarian actors and players that came together and to say that for the first time we can do something about that situation. It was a situation where uh, there was not government directive, government push or government involvement, politicians and others. It was different because ordinary Kenyans using platform of money transfers, the M-Pesa, where we knew Safaricom biggest, uh, Safaricom uh, that was the biggest uh, 
uh, network of, 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 of M-Pesa with 14 million registered members, people with M-Pesa. We looked at even the Airtel money transfers, the, eventually the telecom money transfers and other money transfer platform that existed but also of the banks like Kenya Commercial Bank that was one of the major platforms where people could transfer money to certain accounts, special accounts at Kenya KCB branches throughout the country where ordinary Kenyans were giving their 10 bob, the 20 bob, the 30 bob, 50 bob, 100 bob, 1000 bob that every Kenyan could participate in this. It was wholly owned. Close to 750,000 Kenyans transferred money through the money transfer system Amazingly, in a period of just six weeks, more than one billion shillings was contributed, both in cash and in kind. Money and services that saved the lives of many Kenyans and gave back hope to the vulnerable people. By the end of the emergency phase, the society had reached out to at least 3.5 million Kenyans with interventions in food, health and water. Distribution of 2,057 metric tons of Unimix was also done for 285,000 school-going children in 2,381 schools across the country. That was a very critical provisions by the media to make sure that uh, the information is fast and it reaches everyone. So that anybody who hits the call was able to help. And that is why it succeeded because Kenyans responded. In Africa time in a bit of Superman, I said to me a cock like Kent. Yanni Wobber, a Wobber, and a me. Hear me, can you for a new child? Wipe my tears, don't let me cry. It's what I hear in my mind when I see your tears. Yeah, I'm gonna be there so you can lean on me. I'm right by your side, you'll never be lonely. So take my hand, yeah. and you can walk with me, so don't you cry. Yeah. I look up in the sky and I wonder why life is so unfair Why an innocent child is born in hunger and despair Why can't you and Zangu listen to my prayer Kilio, Kilio, Kilio oh. With such good interventions in place, a research carried out by an independent firm has revealed that malnutrition rates in Turkana have dropped to 13.7% from 37.4% thanks to the Kenyans for Kenya drought initiative. We came together simply to try and do something about the, the, the disaster that was, uh, you know, falling in front of our very eyes where we saw people uh, almost on the verge of losing their lives. Um, it is also because uh, idea was this whole notion of waiting for aid to come from outside. The idea of Kenyans was Kenya was to think out of the traditional box and to do something different than has been done in the past. And the idea was to galvanize the Kenyans of goodwill men and women who could come and do something about their brothers. Like the old, old adage saying goes, don't be your brother's keeper. Others came and did direct donation in kind, in cash, and you know, to have raised 10 million US dollars in kind and in cash, of which 30%, uh, 3 million was in kind and 7 million was in cash, was phenomenal. It's something that had never happened in anywhere in Africa, let alone in Kenya, uh, where it put Kenya on a different map in the world, where Kenyans said, yes, there is a problem, yes, we can do something about it while we appreciate what we're getting from uh, international community. Ordinary people doing extraordinary things of, of really being their brother's keepers.
While employing both scientific and indigenous methods, the KRCS continued to shift from a responsive approach to disaster risk reduction in order to inform early action. It was in this context that the society embarked on empowering communities towards early recovery from the effects of the drought. To ensure food security, at least 1,000 cassava cuttings were distributed to 3,100 families through a collaborative venture of KRCS and Curry. Further, some 300 greenhouses were distributed to schools and community members. 2011, as uh, everybody will remember, was a very difficult year for Kenya. This is the time when we experienced the worst drought in the last 60 years. We were able to, to, to support uh, uh, slightly above 22 projects around the country. Uh, we have uh, integrated food security projects that have healthy components, wet sand component, and, and, and uh, livelihood support in, in Trukana North, uh, Trukana South, uh, East Pokot, uh, in Moyale, uh, Samburu. Uh, we have also projects in, um, in, in Garissa, uh, Saka. We have projects in, uh, of course, the, the projects that were ongoing in, in Madogo. We also were able to, 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 to expand and increase some components that address uh, uh, livelihood aspect. It is also during this time that uh, the organization looked at uh, sustainable solutions like um, supporting drought tolerant uh, crops like uh, cassava uh, in, 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 in Matu Yata, where we have um, drought tolerant species of cassava that has been a product of research for many years by Kenya Agricultural Research Institute where we partnered and were able to procure the, the seed cut. Aindi atufuni, tuna, uh, tunapanda maalagwe atufuni, lakini wakati tulikuja uh, tukafundwa um, maana ya miyogo. Ata mi nika honja nika zikia iyo ni chakulata mzana. Through the year, with our usual motto of first in, last out, the society responded to numerous fire incidents in several informal settlements in Nairobi with food and non-food items. 2011, at least 5,187 families were supported by the society as a result of fire-related effects. As if that were not all. Excessive high rainfall in the western Kenya, the coast, northern and upper eastern regions in 2011 resulted in flash floods, 24 deaths and several displacements, which put the society to another test. While using its ever-ready network of volunteers, KRCS distributed some 8,500 non-food items to the affected people, thanks to the society's preparedness approach of pre-positioning stocks. Through its health department, the society reached out to more than 4 million people with integrated health services, thus saving the lives of many vulnerable people and making health services more accessible to target populations. Home Management of Malaria is an operational research where Kenya Red Cross, in partnership with the Division of Malaria Control, WHO, and Canadian Red Cross, which later transitioned to IFRC coming to the next phase, worked together to actually pilot training and supervising community health workers to clinically diagnose and treat malaria among children who are under five years in 113 hard reach villages in Lamu and Malindi. This unique bit about community home management of malaria is the attempt that was done to actually pilot the use of community health strategy to roll out services at community level. One. Number two, is this the first time malaria medication, the SCT medication, was actually given to community health workers to administer at community level, which they did successfully. Red Cross, Okay. Maternal and child health projects are uh, very important projects uh, because they 
lift. They contribute in, in the Millennium Development Goals 3 and 4, that is uh, improving maternal child health, improving maternal health and uh, reducing uh, child mortality in the country. In the same year, KRCS, through the Watson Department, sought reliable partners with whom the society continued to improve livelihoods and increased access to water and sanitation services across the country. In 2011, the biggest innovative thing we were to do is a new software hygiene promotion model, society in Africa to pilot this model. In software, we have a traditional model used in the Red Cross called FAST, Participatory Hygiene and Sanitation Transformation. And then we have this changing hygiene promotion uh, protocol that the government uses in called community-led total sanitation, which the two models are very different, but there are linkages between the two. So as a department, what we did, which is very unique, and we're going to continue to do this over the next three years, is integrate a hybrid model between the two. So it'll be something that national societies all over the world will want to learn from, as we document how did it work, uh, where did we have the linkages? How did the community react to both models without disturbing the purity of the CLTS and then disturbing the uniformity of the FAST? That millennium goal number seven, we have owned it. We want to contribute to it. We have now reached a million people with access to safe water. A million people is a 40th of the population of this country. For an organization the size of Kenya Red Cross, that is something to be pretty proud of. We move from being just departmentally doing one program to integration. Big integration with DM, for example, disaster management, where we're looking at issues of food security. In that we now said, okay, here's the water. We can bring the water. Disaster management can bring the expertise in food security, bring the two together. And we did big projects for it. Tana River is one is successful. We're doing a project in Detu, which is along the same scales. We have the Kenyans for Kenyan project that we're doing right now. And these are all now built and upscale from the success we had in 2011 with Tana River, Ramu Integrated Food Security Project. All these kind of projects, they link up. And now we are going in this way that we're looking at as a society, getting all the vulnerabilities accessed in one project and sorted out in one. By the end of the year, the Water and Sanitation Department was able to reach out to more than 300,000 people in 11 counties with hygiene promotion and access to safe water services. In a new domain of camp management, following the sudden withdrawal of MSF Spain from offering health and nutrition services in IFO 2, West and East, as a result of the abduction of two of their expatriate staff, discussions commenced between the KRCS, the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies, and the United Nations High Commission for the Refugees over the delivery of services in IFO 2. The actual takeover began in the fourth week of October 2011 with the rollout of the health and nutrition services sector, with the society reaching out to an estimated 76,000 people in IFO 2 West and East including children with some having malnutrition levels of close to 40 percent. With interventions in health and nutrition, water and sanitation, tracing and psychosocial support, amongst other interventions. Indeed, KRCS has demonstrated that the society is always there for vulnerable people, regardless of their nationality, race or gender. Despite the myriad disasters and the heavy responsibilities that came with the drought of 2011, the society's other duties and responsibilities were not compromised. As such, in a new area of grant management, KRCS was appointed the principal recipient for the non-state actors by the Global Fund Kenya Country Coordination Mechanism. This mandates the society to facilitate the management, coordination and implementation of the HIV and AIDS grants, a task that the organization is committed to carrying out most efficiently and reliably. Currently, KRCS is dealing with 52 CBOs countrywide.
the, the, the Kenyan Red Cross as a principal recipient is very clear on its role and, it, and its, its responsibilities both to the country and is very grateful for this opportunity and for this responsibility. The country chose us, okay, the country coordinating mechanism, the Kenya coordinating mechanism chose the Kenya Red Cross for its, for its competence, for its reach and for its track record of managing big grants and so we, we take this responsibility very seriously. During the year under review, the KRCS business ventures continue to experience phenomenal growth. The Red Court chain of hotels continued to break even as the construction of the Boma Hotel in Nairobi progressed. Indeed, KRCS's assets value has grown tremendously throughout the year and the once bankrupt organization, equated to a leaking bucket, is now worth $55 million, money which is plowed back into humanitarian work. Boma Hotels. Uh... Now this one looks uh, something like people have not seen in Kenya. So I can understand people saying this is the Dubai in Kenya. Uh, facilities that, uh, you know, what you'd expect in any other hotel. But besides that, we have other facilities that you won't find in other hotels. Only have you know, the usual uh, jacuzzis and saunas and the gyms and the aerobics. We are talking of a health club that has other things like hydrotherapies, ozone therapies, you know, UV therapies, the vicious showers, things that, uh, you know, you don't find in, you know, the hotels in Nairobi. We will see uh, the market with the competition in terms of, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the standard uh, uh, hotel market. But we are also going to create another uh, niche for ourselves so that uh, besides competing for the ordinary market, we also have a market of ourselves that we are not competing with everybody. With everybody. We want to give our guests value for money. And when we say we want to give them value for money, we are not just talking of, uh, you know, making a statement. We know what guests are looking for. And we know what guests are not looking for. So we want to give them exactly what they are looking for and deliver it beyond their expectation. In 2011, the emergency medical services continued to expand its scope of operations to other parts of the country and increased its membership. The company has continued to provide 24-hour emergency ambulance services with state-of-the-art life support ambulances spread in 16 counties countrywide. Under logistics, the society's supply chain department was on course in the establishment of a fully-fledged logistics center with state-of-the-art warehouses. The center is earmarked to provide 3,120 square meters of storage space capacity for the storage of the society's goods and for commercial use. The completion of the logistics center, the first facility of its kind in East and Central Africa within the movement, is a great milestone as it is already providing security for the KRCS warehoused goods as well as enough parking space for the society's vehicles. Indeed, in 2011, the KRCS's role in humanitarian work continued to be recognized and appreciated by individuals, other organizations and the government of Kenya. You know, for me, the infrastructure that the Red Cross has, you know, where do we get the food from, which trucks are going to carry it, how does it get to these places, you know, we didn't have to think about that ourselves, really, because we knew that there was an organization that has a track record in doing this. So once we empower it, enable it to do it, you know, they will go ahead and do it. Being a Rotary organization and a humanitarian organization, it is our moral duty to help our citizens. Hence, we found the platform uh, of working with Red Cross very interesting. Consequently, the MDG's Gold Trust Fund awarded the KRCS for helping in achieving the MDGs. Society received an award in recognition of supporting malaria control and management and two other awards which were co-owned by Safaricom and other partners under the Kenyans for Kenya Drought Initiative for supporting the eradication of extreme poverty.
The PRSK also awarded the society with the Champion of the Year Award for the Non-Profit Campaign of the Year for 2011, thanks to the Kenyans for Kenya initiative. The awards are indeed a testament to the level of trust that the society has been accorded by external players. The big strides made by the society in 2011 would not have been complete without the timely support of our partners. Uh, there are many examples worldwide where people have more difficult uh, challenges but have been able to overcome that and there's no reason why we can't learn from that. And I have seen examples of what that can uh, you know, do to actually change some of that through some partnerships that have started with Kenya Red Cross already who came in with funding or expertise while KRCS carried out the actual implementation of the projects. And I think the reason that we're all coming together, part of the reason, clearly we all want to do something for long term for, for Kenya. We want to alleviate this annual drought and flood, famine. So therefore, you know, Safaricom, Safaricom Foundation, we're totally behind you, Abbas. We will totally support you as we will work with all the other corporates and I know that you know, some of these dreams will turn into reality. So certainly at Safaricom, Safaricom Foundation, we're totally behind you. I really wish that everyone in Kenya had the same level of passion, the same level of resilience, the same level of diligence and tenacity. Because like you rightly say, Abbas, year in, year out, you do come to us. You come to Coca-Cola, you come to Barclays, you come to Gina Dean. You come to Safaricom, Uchumi, Nation, and many of us in this place, which shall remain unnamed, but you do come to us on an annual basis to ask, what is this that we can do? And we do respond. And I'm pleased this morning that at last we are pursuing a more long-term and sustainable solution to this. They work tirelessly for long and odd hours, thus fulfilling our motto of alleviating human suffering. And as we forge into the future, KRCS continues to leverage its activities on the balanced scorecard. A business-like plan aligned to the IFRC Global Strategy 2012. This methodology has indeed pointed the society towards improved performances and increased contributions to social values. As a result, the society has embarked on a journey of moving from good to great in an endeavor to achieve excellence. Consequently, in November 2011, the Society took a cultural survey to determine its positioning on the cultural curve and amazingly, it scored 85%, an indication that we're moving in the right direction.